Hi there. Welcome to Business Leadership Podcast. In this podcast, I interview business leaders and industry experts to share their knowledge, their wisdom, and experience to help you grow your business. I truly believe that sometimes single insight can completely change your business directions and help you scale your business. In this episode, I interview Randy Taylor. Randy had a long career in the media before he started as a tailor-made leadership, where he's a keynote speaker, he's an author of two books, he's, he's a mentor, and he's a performance coach as well. I think you're going to really enjoy this discussion around human behavior, human potential, um, relationships, and also um, time management. You know, we talk about a variety of different topics, and I think uh, from a business leadership perspective, Randy uh, explains if you can understand human relationships and, and uh, behaviors, you can solve many complex problems. So before you go, um, don't forget to uh, send us your feedback, like, and subscribe to this channel. Until next time, enjoy this episode. Hi hey guys, welcome to Leadership Podcast. Uh, today, my guest is Randy Taylor. Randy is, uh, you know, uh, he has long uh, background in, in, in the media, and uh, he's a keynote speaker. He's a performance coach, and he's author of two books. Um, first one was uh, Lost Journal, um, and the second one is uh, Alleviate, uh, Elevate. Um, is, is that right, Andy? Two books, right? Um, so That's far? correct. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Welcome to podcast. Thank you so much for time today. Oh, great to uh, great to be here, Gurpreet, and, and g- congratulations on this in- this initiative. I think that uh, what you're doing uh, is fantastic to to broaden things out for people, to bring you know ideas. And I've watched uh, a number of the business owners and uh, people on uh, on your channel. And uh, congratulations, this is a Thank this you. is a great initiative. Yeah. Thank you. I, you know, a couple of topics we talk about, you know, Randy, they are so important in a, in a leadership. You know, I'm. Excited to learning from you and also looking forward to our discussion because some of the some of the talk that we talk about, you know, they're so critical for for environment we are in right now. Um, as you know that, you know, every you know business, uh, you know, a lot of business change where they were before COVID and, you know, business leaders need to step up to get out of this uh, economic mess we have to get back to the level where we need to get to. So if you just walk us through your little background and, and uh, you know, what that got you to, uh, you know, in, in a, a leadership training. <laughs> It, it, it's a long story. I'll, I'll, I'll shorten it as much as I can, the Coles Notes version. So, yeah. yes, I've, I've been in this uh, in this field of uh, personal and professional development. I'm a, I'm a behavioral expert in, uh, you know, in change management uh, for people in, uh, in business and sales uh, and, you know, and in life as well. So, uh, as we were talking before we came on the, uh, the broadcast today, that pretty much everything that we do uh, is, you know, is connected to behavior. Behavior directs our activity. It directs our choices. It uh, it impacts our income, our relationships, our health. I mean, it, it impacts absolutely everything. And I've been fascinated by uh, human behavior my entire life. I've been studying it my entire life, uh, mm-hmm. trying to figure out how is it that one person ends up homeless on Jarvis Street in Toronto, and the yeah. next person comes along and they're Bill Gates, right? So uh, fascinated by that. My own backstory. I grew up in poverty and parent alcoholism and lived on the streets homeless at 14. Mm -hmm. So you come into this and, you know, you, you start to assume that what's happening to you is going to be your future. And a guidance counselor at uh, age 16, the day I left high school, I, he tried for an hour to talk me out of going and he wasn't able to, and Mm -hmm. I was walking out the door and he stopped me and he said, Randy, I want you to know something. And I said, what's that? He said, I want you to know that where you are now has nothing to do with where you can go. And, mm-hmm. you know, there was no magic moment. The skies weren't parting and the angels weren't singing. But for some reason, those words stuck and they kept coming back. And I started to you know, challenge the own, you know, my own thoughts that said not, not much was possible for me and what the world said and the rest of it. And, you know, you come to find out that, you know, predominantly what I was thinking and what the world was telling me was not true. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, you know, going into... Uh, you know, studying this science of human behavior, uh, the majority of my adult life at age 28, uh, lots of other things happened, manual labor jobs and worked in sales in a number of areas. But uh, age 28, I decided on a, on a dare with a coworker to finally make a phone call I'd never made my whole life, which was to call and find out mm-hmm. how do you be that guy in the radio? Uh, yeah. and, I, and I did that. Uh, And that led to, uh, you know, going to see the program director at a local radio station to getting hired $4 and 25 cents an hour part time midnight till six o'clock in the morning that led to uh, the number one radio station and TV station in uh, in Canada. So this this entire process of 
how experience and the recall of information and behavior impacts everything. Mm -hmm. um, it, it just absolutely fascinates me. And, and so, I think that, you know, we can all gain so much from it. Mm -hmm. So what is it a behavior that, you know, some people are not successful and, and it totally drives some people to be very, very successful. So what, what is that? Is that a mindset? What, what is behind the behavior that, that triggers that success? And, and, it's, and it doesn't trigger in some people. Yeah, so there, there, there's two components to behavior. Uh, and it's mm -hmm. interesting, you, you mentioned, which is something people don't talk about a lot, the people who are driven to succeed, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, we can see examples of that in politics and business and sport uh, around the world every day, people that just have this incredible, you know, drive and desire to work so much harder than the average person to achieve it. It's not given to them. I mean, let's be honest there. These people are working for it, but they're, they're wired that way. So there's two components. One is the recall of information stored in, uh, in, in files in the brain in a file called a neural net cluster of cells held together with synapses that store the information uh, from past experience. And so we have, every time you have a thought, every time you take an action, you instantly go inside the subconscious mind, open the files from past experience and say, what do we know about this? Mm -hmm. uh, and over time, that information that's in the file is what drives us to make choices uh, and incorrect choices. It, it, the information in the file, you know, doesn't have to be true either. Fear of flying is a perfect example, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Safest form of travel in the world is flying, mm -hmm. right? Are people afraid to fly? Yes, because they've convinced themselves of a lie. So uh, on, on the recall of the information side, that's how people can end up, you know, making the decision to stop, to quit, to not go to the gym, to not call the clients, to not spend time with their kids, to not, you know, right, to not do those things because of this mm -hmm. information. The second part uh, is on a is on a biochemical level, uh, mm -hmm. and in speaking to you know to what you said about the people who are driven, so there are people who are driven to fail and driven to succeed. Uh, and much of this happens on a subconscious level that we're not aware that we're uh, involved in. So um, every time you have a thought, you make a chemical. If you have great thoughts and powerful thoughts and positive thoughts, you make chemicals that are great and powerful and positive. If you have self-limiting thoughts and negative thoughts and depressed thoughts, that is how you're going to end up feeling, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so this ends up really becoming a cycle and we end up becoming programmed by these chemicals uh, that we're not aware that it's happening. Uh, cells don't have a soul. And so when you have this thought, it creates the chemical in a uh, organ in the brain called the hypothalamus goes throughout the body, enters into the wall of the cell receptor, causes a chemical reaction. Uh, I never attended science in school, but I, <laughs> I spent my life studying it. But, um, yeah. But it, uh, you know, it causes that chemical reaction, which produces the feeling you've had. We've all had that feeling before. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wrote about this a couple of months ago, waking up in, you know, two dreams about three days apart. One was a nightmare and one was a, a fabulous dream. The nightmare, mm -hmm. I woke up, my heart was racing and my hands were trembling. And, you know, and, and I was just I was filled with anxiety and, and the nightmare didn't happen. And conversely, mm -hmm. you know, a couple of days later, I had this amazing dream and I woke up in the best mood possible, like I had just won the Olympics, right? And that mm -hmm. didn't happen either. Uh, and so what happens is that when we have something that triggers the emotion that produces the chemical from the past experience, mm -hmm. it pushes the body to, uh, on a subconscious level, to do something that produces more of that chemical. Road rage, right? Mm -hmm. Road rage is a great example. Do you think mm -hmm. that people are, you know, really, you know, that wired to go around getting angry at everyone who doesn't signal 10 seconds, you know, before they should? Yeah. No, they are conditioned to want mm -hmm. more of that chemical. Okay. Uh, and so behavior on those two sides drives us all both on the recall of information and on the biochemical level. The good news is that any doubt can be turned into a belief mm -hmm. uh, and any addictive nature uh, to the chemical compounds of negative behavior can be tipped to the positive, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody like Tiger Woods that would be out uh, on a golf course, you know, before his accident and everything else, but he would be out on a golf course 12 hours a day in the blazing sun, uh, you know, with a, with, with a coach and no applause and no trophy and no anything and work mm -hmm. that hard. Why? Because he was just driven. He had to have 
more of those chemicals to be on the 18th degree into the final day when he went, yes, mm -hmm. and he won one more major, right? So mm -hmm. it's uh, on, on both sides, it pushes us in, in one of two directions. So, you know, a very interesting you mentioned chemicals and the second thing I remember you mentioned memory, you know, the past memory. If you know your, these two very well, can you control it to your advantage? Can you, can you change it a little bit and uh, influence it to your advantage? So even though it's, you know, you're not getting it, but if you, if you know this is a goal I'm trying to achieve, can you control these two to, to, uh, to your advantage and achieve your goals? What are you trying to get to? Yeah, so to, a, to, a, to, to one extent. So there's two ways uh, of approaching this. One is through, you know, intentional reprogramming exercises that you intentionally input the correct information into the subconscious mind, into those files, mm -hmm. day after day after day after day after day, until the file becomes big enough that it becomes the dominant file. And eventually I reach for that file, and that file says, I love to fly. I get to see, see. you know, incredible places all over the world. I'm excited to go. Mm -hmm. When the brain used to tell me I'm terrified to fly, right? So uh, there's that side. Uh, on the other side, there's a process that I've worked on in creating and I work with clients on called conscious intention. So uh, whatever it is that, you know, that, that would happen right now. So if, uh, I don't know, let's, uh, let, let's pick something and say, uh, oh, my, my phone just rang mm -hmm. and it's my, it's my biggest client, right? Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to look at that phone call. I won't answer it because we're doing this interview, right? But, but if I'm, you know, if I look at the name on the phone and that causes me, of course, to go inside my brain and say, what do we know about this name? It's your biggest client. And I, oh, and here's what happened uh, a month ago. Mm -hmm. And you had a major problem with this client, right? Am I going to now start judging this call based on the recall of the information from a month ago? Mm -hmm. Probably. But through conscious intention, uh, because I am hyper aware of this and I'm constantly working on it, I will stop. I'll look at the name and say, whatever happened in the past has nothing to do with this call. Whatever Thank happened you. yesterday has nothing to do with this appointment. Whatever happened last month has nothing to do with this relationship. And I'm going to judge the moment by the moment and the day by the day and the experience by the experience. And the repetitive action of that over time, you know, will, mm -hmm. will go a long way in helping to set aside, you know, basically prejudging everything. We overthink mm -hmm. everything. And it's not about, you know, what's going on in front of me right now. It's the recall of what happened yesterday. Very interesting. Interesting. Right. So, so you train a lot of, you know, you coach a lot of lead, uh, business leaders or you train a lot of uh, people. So, where, where you see a uh, uh, bigger struggle is, Randy, you know, especially what we're going through with the, you know, economically uh, or, or with the COVID. Um, so let's talk about leadership a little bit. You know, where you see the, the biggest like, struggles is, is it a change management? Is it a, what part of that leadership that you see the biggest struggle from, from your experience, Randy? Yeah, a few areas. I mean, number one, leaders are human, you know, and, and I think that the world just, you know, they, they, they'll look at that title and say, well, you're a leader, Right. Uh, and, and somehow you should be completely immune from everything that the, your underlings go through. Well, no, of course not. Yeah. So, you know, we are all going to be, you know, caught in this same process of the recall of information based on a past experience that, you know, mm -hmm. if I said to you, COVID phase four, oh my gosh, right? That yeah. you've just opened this file and now all kinds of things are going on in your brain. Does it mean that it's real? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we, you know, we did hear the stories two or three or four weeks ago that said phase four was perhaps going to be the worst ever. Well, guess what? It kind of turned out not to be true. <laughs> you yeah. know, the cases are plummeting. We're looking pretty good. So, yeah. uh, you know, grabbing that information for a leader is problematic. So, you know, that's one. Uh, in order to, you know, in order to be a leader, it's, you know, we've all heard that great analogy that if you're on an airplane and the, you know, the, the mass drops down. Do you put it on your child or put it on yourself? You know, and for the leaders, put it on yourself, right? Get your mm -hmm. own, uh, you know, affairs in order and your own mindset, uh, you know, really aligned to be able to define what you should be doing for yourself. That's, that's job one. Uh, job two, don't judge your people, right? Based on what it is that you're seeing. I, I've so many conversations with leaders and they've said, uh, oh, I don't know what's wrong with that guy. It's like, no, stop that. There's nothing wrong with the guy. 
right? The guy has had some experiences, right? That have impacted the files in his brain and his belief system and system of doubt and everything else that can be corrected and that can be changed. You know, it, all of the doubt that we create in life is all based on, uh, you know, a, a opinions of everyone around us. Mm-hmm. So, you know, number two, as a leader, don't be the one who makes those prejudgment opinions about people on your team, because those mm-hmm. people are the ones that can shock the world, mm-hmm. right? If you support them and you lift them up and you make them part of something. So that's important. The The, the final thing I think you know, in going through COVID and going through change and going through, uh, you know, improvements in technology, I had a conversation with a with a, uh, a CEO uh, a week ago, and we were talking and I said, you know, it's so interesting, because there's a lot of technology that's coming out that uh, is really mm-hmm. ramping things up in his business. And it's difficult. And I said, imagine the day when horse and buggies disappeared. Right. We've come a long way since that, but change is going to be constant and we're going to have to accept it, deal with it. You know, and again, it's, you know, it's behavior. It's the the mindset of our approach to this. It's going to, you know, that's going to uh, to impact everything. And I think the smartest thing that any leader can do is tap tap into the brain trust uh, of the people within their organization, Mm -hmm. because, you know, just that term leader. Well, then you know, I guess the world and everyone expects me to make 95% of all the great decisions. Yeah. No, no, that's no, that's not your job. Yeah. Uh, your job is to be smart enough to use the brain trust of everyone mm-hmm. uh, in your organization, bring everyone together across department lines, bring in shipping and accounting and, you know, sales and uh, everyone together yeah. and problem solve together and have these creative juices flowing together. Uh, Mm -hmm. and you will come up with, you know, more information than you could possibly ever have come up with on your own. And I, I really think is that, you know, the job is of a leader is to really look at their team, uh, and include them. The power of inclusion is Mm -hmm. not only for the creative side, but for, you know, the emotional connection side of the people on your team, because they go home at night and they didn't get a 3% bonus. They made a difference. Right. They mattered. They contributed. They're part Mm -hmm. of this uh, organization that's growing. So uh, I think those are the keys. Yeah. You know, that's the one of the elements you mentioned, change management. I see a lot of struggle from a business leadership standpoint, just simply just to manage the change. You know, uh, and, uh, you know, every time you make a change in a business, you know, people involved in that. And, and, uh, you know, I think a lot of it takes a lot of personal development as well. You know, how you are you. uh, uh, you know, understand the change and uh, what can you do to, uh, you know, lessen the impact on a people. But I see a lot of people struggle in that area either, you know, especially in my world when, when uh, you know, technology is not, a, you know, a, a most business leaders, uh, you know, that the skills that, that they run with. So, you know, every piece of technology kind of sometimes intimidates them, but, you know, it's not understanding that no matter what change you make, business meant to change, right? You have to change over the time, no matter what. So I see a lot of struggles from business leadership standpoint, simply, um, and, uh, and how to manage the change. I think that's another area that they struggle simply. Hey, how are we going to manage the change every time something happens? Well, you know, again, it's, you know, it's how we look at it is how it's perceived. So, you know, if we, if we, if we look at change and again, you know, going back to behavior and this recall of information, and that's how we make decisions. If someone came in uh, and said, uh, oh, you know what, that, uh, that, that Zoom platform it's completely changed. Mm-hmm. It's gotten way better. Now it's going to be in 3D and you're going to be able to connect people, you know, to do all, you know, yeah. some things that you couldn't possibly imagine. But the initial reaction is, oh, it's changing. Because yeah. why? Because that was our comfort zone, right? So we got mm-hmm. comfortable using Zoom the way it was. In the beginning, uh, I've been doing video conferencing for 10 years. So when Zoom came along, I was thrilled because uh, it gave us this, you know, this wonderful uh, platform. But, you know, Again, the leader who is, you know, facing change, looks at this, goes inside their own brain and says, oh, remember the change that we went through in 08, right? Mm-hmm. When uh, when the markets crashed, remember the change we went through with the oil embargo, remember the change. Well, those have nothing to do with today, mm-hmm. right? So, but we end up falling into that emotional reaction, uh, you know, about what this change is going to be rather than embracing it and saying, we're, we're going to make incredible inroads uh, mm-hmm. into our into our market sector by, uh, you know, adapting to change and looking for the opportunities and bringing our people in 
and mm-hmm. sitting everybody down and going, guys, you know, everybody in our sector is facing this right now. How do we use this to our advantage to really drive some growth here? Yeah. Right. It, it, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's the same issue. The change is here. How are we going to approach it? Yeah, definitely. You know, it, it needs, and sometimes it's a personal development as well, right? Uh, in order for me to manage it, I need to maybe develop some skills in myself that, hey, listen, this is how I got to handle some of that stuff. Yeah. So very interesting. So how, how do you, uh, uh, you know, uh, help our business leaders, uh, Randy? If you talk about your, your uh, you know, uh, approach, like, you know, uh, what do they come to, you know, when, when you interact with business, do they come to you with a certain issues or how do you interact with them? How do you help them out? Um, yeah. Uh, the- yeah. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's, you know, it can be a variety of issues from, you know, trying to impact client service, trying to manage their teams remotely, uh, trying to deal with change, uh, trying to help their sales teams. You know, it's sales, I think, is one of the, you know, one of the quintessential examples of what goes on in life and what is possible. You look at Mm -hmm. every organization, right? There's going to be the top 2% who are outperforming everyone not only in the organization, but in their industry, day mm-hmm. after day, year after year. And you look at these people and say, how can they do this? A- and one of the presentations I deliver is called the 2% Success Solution. Uh, what, are, you know, what are the 2% doing, the 98% or not? Uh, and the reality is, is that when you really drill down on this, you find out it's so much less than what the average person knows it to be. But they have become conditioned with these reactive behaviors that mm-hmm. keep them on the wrong side of the ledger. And, and you know, the, the, the top performers, uh, are they doing things that are a secret? Nope. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, is, you know, are they, are they making certain that, uh, you know, it's a, uh, you know, hermetically sealed in a mayonnaise jar from yesterday, their, you know, their daily schedule of what they're doing. No, yeah. you could find that out. Mm-hmm. So if you can find out what they're doing and you can find out when they're doing it, if you work hard and create the behavior, when you begin to do what they're doing, will you get what they're getting? Mm-hmm. And the answer is yes. And so, you know, going through this, and it's interesting because I always start out with that slide and, you know, talk to people and say, uh, I'm going to make this statement. And I know it sounds ridiculous, it's so much less than we believe it to be. I will ask you to hold me to account at the end of it. Was I honest with you? Mm-hmm. Uh, was I truthful? Is it something every person in this room can do? And every person says, yes. And I think that, you know, more than anything, we need to, you know, set aside all the negative that's going on in the world and all the negative in our head and really realize that the potential every one of us has inside is more than we could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and that's definitely a very interesting topic. You know, how do you tap into the potential? You know, even in a workforce, when you have a staff, you know, um, yeah, we, we, all, we all have a quotas, we all have a numbers to deliver, but, you know, that's not a potential. That's simply a very, very small subset. So what, what takes you to tap into the potential of your staff or the potential yourself? And if you can, you know, uh, operate on that level, you can achieve totally different results. Yeah, there's lots of things to do on a, you know, on a corporate level, on a, on a leadership level. Uh, create a, you know, a, uh, a model of inclusion that we talked about. B, uh, take the employee, um, uh, I can't even think of the name of it anymore because I'm so against it, uh, employee review form at the end of the year. Mm-hmm. And you know what you do with that? You change the name at the top and you call it the employee's goal form, right? Mm-hmm. So you're, you're really working hard on creating you know, a, 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 an organization of belief we all believe in each other. We all believe that it's possible. We all believe that we are unstoppable. Uh, and mm-hmm. it takes, you know, it takes the repetitive action of that again and again and again to move things forward rather than, you know, from a leadership standpoint, rather than rewarding only results, right? So the sales mm-hmm. rep that, uh, you know, started out and has a good natural warm market and, you know, they brought in a hundred thousand dollars worth of business in their first month. They get brought to the front of the room, and they get all the applause, and they get the check, and you know, they get uh, they get the bonus, and they get all the love from their home, from their family, right? Yeah. So, what do you think that does to the to the other rep who doesn't have a warm market, who's working really hard, and gets zero recognition, mm-hmm. right? So, the person with a warm market that's you know in the early going, it's easy climbs and climbs and what happens to their confidence. It grows and grows and grows. Uh, And the person that doesn't have the warm market, they're invisible. 
And what happens to their confidence? It goes down and down and down. So rewarding activity instead of just productivity, right? Instead Mm -hmm. of just the numbers uh, is another paying attention to, you know, to everything that we, that we do um, Mm -hmm. has, has incredible impact. My daughter came home yesterday and talked about a supply teacher that they get from time to time. And this woman is, uh, she's not nice. (laughs) She's just, she's a mean person. And this is in grade seven. And Uh. She has a propensity if she doesn't like something to center the child out and tell them. And my, my daughter's desk mate, who's not very good at art. My, my daughter's great at art. It's just one of those things, not math, but she's really good at art. Uh, anyway, her desk mate worked for two days on drawing this pumpkin picture. And mm-hmm. the teacher walked up and looked down at it and said, uh, oh, come on. Are you kidding me? That's the best you can do. And tore it up and threw it in the garbage. Uh, and I just went, oh my gosh. I mean, you you know what you just did to his mindset? And because you said it to him once, you think, oh, it was one time. The child will tell himself a thousand times. It's going to play back over and over. Over and over and over again. And when that happens, the file gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and bigger until he feels like an abject failure. Uh, and so make no mistake that the people on your team, they're just bigger kids, right? Mm-hmm. We are all impacted by, you know, behavior, by behavior. And it's not, you know, everyone gets a trophy. It's not, it's not about that, but it's about really recognizing the kind of, uh, you know, interaction that we have with people on our team. Are we lifting them up or are we tearing them down? And so mm-hmm. that's, that's important. Very interesting. Um, just respective of time, I know uh, we, we get to wrap up. So just wanted to see any message you have for business leaders, you know, definitely, you know, we're getting through this, you know, COVID now, you know, we're getting other side where, you know, businesses are opening. Business leaders got to step up. We got to build economies, you know, government can help, but it's a business leaders end of the day, they, they got to, you know, rebuild those businesses that what we had before or, or take it to the next step. Any message that, you know, coming through this, you know, that, uh, uh, that, you know, you can share with the business leaders that we're watching that, you know, listen, look, maybe look at different ways and, and, uh, you know, Go back in the scale, scaling businesses. Hundred percent. So, uh, number one, have courage. Uh, you know, we look at somebody like Elon Musk and think, well, he is in, he's achieved more than any human being ever will. But let's trace this back to when he came to Canada broke. Okay, so he started out with nothing. So everything that he has been he has created, it's been out of thin air, and he's done it with more courage than anyone in business we've probably ever seen. They have had him in the obituaries for how long? <laughs> They don't yeah. anymore, by the way. Yeah. Right. They finally got to the point where they stopped, you know, believing in his death. So, you know, number one, have the courage. Number two, be smart enough to bring your people in, you mm-hmm. know, a- and look for creative ways to deal with it. So, you know, if you're a restaurant, if you're a retailer, if you're a, you know, if you're a lumber supply, if you, whatever kind of business that you are, bring your people together and go, guys, we're getting back to it. Mm-hmm. What can we do that the competition is not doing? It's really going to earn this. And mm-hmm. I remember uh, a long time ago, it was back in 08 when I was still in radio and I was at uh, CFRB in Toronto. And uh, during that time in the economic downturn, uh, advertisers, that's, you know, in, in radio and television and print, that's, you know, before the, the days of the internet, a lot of it. And so, mm-hmm. you know, organizations within a market sector would, you know, buy their share of advertising. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this one advertiser, their their space was uh, was in travel. They were a, they were a travel company, uh, and at the time when 08 hit, the advertisers just disappeared off the radio station. We lost mm-hmm. millions of dollars overnight because you know they they curled up and they they went into a ball and said, "Oh, we got to protect this capital and let's see what is going to happen from this uh, from this recession, maybe depression." Yeah. And one of the advertisers, one travel company looked at this and said, okay, so, you know, if the travel advertising on this radio station and TV and and the rest of it, if it's a piece of pie, we have maybe one slice out of six. Mm -hmm. And then within two weeks, they were the only slice left on the radio. Mm -hmm. And within a month, they lost 50% of their revenue, of the recurring revenue. Mm -hmm. But in looking at what happened to the market, they doubled their advertising. And as a result Mm -hmm. of doing that, they ended up owning the airwaves. 
Mm -hmm. And they became the dominant travel company. And they ended up increasing their market share by something like 65% over oh. you know, the, the, the pre-recession times. Mm -hmm. So everybody's contracting at the expanding. You know, the everybody's company. contracting and he's expanding. So what did they do? A, they had courage and they made an intelligent decision. It wasn't, it wasn't flippant, right? It was the right decision. And, you know, again, the, the, the power of bringing your people in, you get so close to it that mm -hmm. somebody in shipping can stand up at the back of the room and say, you know, I've always thought about this. Everybody turns around and goes, did you hear what that kid said? Yeah. Wow, mm -hmm. that's a fabulous idea. What do, we, what do you say we use that? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we can, uh, we can think our way out of everything. It, it begins with courage and thought. And you know, bringing together people collectively as a team. Very interesting. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, business leader watching, I uh, definitely encourage that. Hey, listen, you know, talk. You know, reach out to you, have a conversation, have a discussion with you. Maybe you know, who knows? Uh, you can, uh, you know, sometime my little insight can completely change business direction. Sometime, right? Where are you going? One hundred percent. Yeah, it sure can. It's what you know, what what you're doing right now, it started as Thank a you. thought, became an intention, mm -hmm. created an emotion, right? drove energy, started action. And now look at all the, you know, all the great information that you have on, uh, you know, on your channel that you're sharing with other people um, just because it's the right thing to do. And I'm sure wonderful things will come your way because of it. I know that's not why you did it intentionally. You just thought, Hey, I've got to do something. And uh, but that's how it all starts. So yeah. Kudos. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. No, yeah. it was just sign a COVID and I simply said, you know, I need to talk to business leaders or industry expert and share yeah. that information with others and, and see if there's a value in it. But got a good response so far. So, it's, uh, you know, good stuff. Uh, where can pe people find you, Randy, and how can they connect with you? Uh, probably through the uh, through the website. Uh, TaylorMadeLeadership.com is, uh, is the website. There's all the contact information and uh, everything. And I always joke with people that golf is my other company. So... <laughs> 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 it's tailor-made leadership. Uh, yeah, great to uh, great to, to be here. I really appreciate this. This is fun. Great. Thank you so much for your time, Randy. All right. Have an excellent day. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye-bye.